Hey guys, my name is Oscar Mikey, and today we're looking at update 0.2.2 for Battlefield 2042. This update was put out on the 25th of November, the Thursday, and it's bringing a lot of changes. A lot of players have been very critical about the game. Uh, we've been having a lot of issues with it, a lot of balance problems, a lot of bugs and glitches and that kind of thing. And it seems like DICE is taking that feedback to heart. They are uh, addressing those issues and they're pushing out patches to fix a lot of this stuff. So this is how it's going to work. I'm just going to open up the post on the dev blog page and I'm going to read through the fixes and the changes one by one for you guys and we'll go over them piece by piece. The first item is bullet spread has been reduced on all weapons except shotguns. This should result in better accuracy during gameplay. So I made a short video about the bullet spread in Battlefield 2042 and there were a lot of commenters on that video that didn't really seem to get the issue. They thought I was talking about felt recoil from the weapons and suggesting that switching fire modes or burst firing would solve the issue. And that's not at all uh, what the problem was. The problem was that DICE introduced too much artificial bullet spread based on player movement, uh, their stance, and it didn't really matter if your crosshair, if your point of aim was right on top of your target, you would most of the time still miss because the artificial spread that DICE put on weapons was just too strong and it was making your rounds veer off to the side and completely miss your targets, even though you were aiming right at the person. So that's a very welcome change. I love to see that. And hopefully the gunplay is going to be more rewarding and feel better for us uh, when we are able to control that recoil and uh, keep stay on target with our weapons. Uh, the next fix in this patch is uh, they've increased the vertical recoil on the PP-29. They did this to ensure the weapon does not overperform when engaging outside of its intended combat range. So this weapon was the meta for a while. Everybody's been using it, so this, this weapon's seen a bit of a nerf. And we might not see a lot of people use it in the future, so keep an eye out for that. They resolved an issue where players who were killed uh, close to obstacles such as walls or water were unable to be revived. This, so this is kind of an interesting one. I've seen this glitch before. I haven't really noticed water or walls or geometry on the map in general affecting it. I've come across players who are just downed in the middle of an open area, uh, nothing else around, and I wasn't able to revive them. So it's good to see those changes. It's good to see that reviving is more reliable now, but I think they might have some more changes that they need to make some more improvements to push out in future updates. They resolved instances where players were stuck in a down state and un unable to respawn. They've also introduced a hidden timer that will activate after 30 seconds of being in a down state that will force a redeploy should it be required. That's a really nice change. A lot of reports have come out uh, since launch that people are getting stuck in weird, in weird situations, like in down states or the pregame menu or something like that. People, people sometimes get stuck and they're unable to spawn into the map and play. And one of those bugs is getting uh, squashed here. That's good to see. The 20 millimeter cannons for the Nightbird are getting a nerf. They're reducing the radius at which the bullets do damage upon impact and decreasing their splash damage overall. So they've reduced the blast radius size from three to two. That's a 30% reduction. That's pretty big. And they've reduced the inner blast radius damage from 1.5 to 0.75. That's also quite a, a large reduction. So you probably won't see a lot of players just going ham with the Nightbird and mowing down tons of enemies. It's got uh, quite, quite a serious nerf there. The KA-520 Super Hokum, that's the dual rotor um, Russian attack chopper. They've reduced the 30 millimeter cannon uh, damage overall, and they've reduced the range at which uh, the rounds do their full damage. So the damage fall off is more significant on that. They reduced the blast radius from two to 1.6. They reduced the blast damage from 20 to 14. They reduced bullet damage before damage fall off from 18 to 15. They reduced the overall damage fall off distance from 200 to 180. They reduced the rounds damage at max fall off distance from eight to six. And they increased the overall range and spread of the weapon. There are some similar changes coming to the Apache, the War Chief helicopter. Uh, again, on the 30 millimeter cannon, they're reducing the radius at which the, the rounds do damage upon impact and decreasing their splash damage overall. They reduced blast damage from 20 to 18, and they increased the damage fall off for enemies that are further away from the impact center. So if one of these choppers is coming at you and they're using the 30 millimeter cannon, they are going to have to be more accurate with their fire to take you out quicker. They reduced the overall damage of the minigun for all land vehicles, as well as making the damage drop off now start earlier on, on that gun, on the minigun. They reduced the minigun rounds in damage from 18 to 13 before damage fall off takes effect. They reduced the damage fall off distance from 60 to 40, and they reduced the bullet damage at max fall off distance to 6. A very welcome change is the LCAA hovercraft is getting its armor reduced. It's getting a bit of a nerf in the armor department. 
Uh, no doubt all of you have seen people ripping around in the hovercraft and using the mini guns on people and just destroying with it. So really happy to see that. Really happy that the hovercraft is getting a bit of a nerf. It was stupidly overpowered. Based on this list of changes, it looks like it's still going to be able to fly. People are still going to be able to like climb up walls with it and stuff, but at least it's not going to be doing as much damage. In Portal, the UAV-1 has been re-enabled. They gave it greatly reduced health regeneration delay and speed. It has increased missile damage against vehicles and infantry, and you're able to roadkill enemies with it now. <laughs> Breakthrough matches now correctly end after the last sector has been captured. I haven't experienced this bug personally, but that sounds like a pretty bad one, pretty annoying one. I'm glad they fixed that. They resolved an issue that caused players queued for a match in Battlefield Portal to be sent back to the menu. This one I actually did experience. I've been kicked out of lots of queues in Portal, and it was just really frustrating to try and get into a game. I'm really glad they fixed that one too. And then the final item on the bottom is they've just made general improvements to stability to prevent rare occurrences of game crashing. I have experienced game crashes, uh, particularly on day one of the early launch, I experienced a bunch of crashes and couldn't really get into the game. It's been pretty steady for me so far, but glad to see they're making those changes anyway. All right, guys, that's everything for update 0.2.2 for Battlefield 2042. It's a really solid list of improvements to the game. I'm really glad that DICE is listening to the community and making these changes for us. It's still got a little ways to go before it reaches the standard of quality we kind of expect from games on launch day. So just keep playing and keep uh, sending DICE your feedback. Uh, in the next update, in update number three, they've put together quite a list of features and fixes and updates they're bringing to the game with the, the next patch. I'm not going to go over those in this video. I will link to it in the description below if you want to check it out, but it is, it is a massive list. They're going to be making changes to the UI, uh, matchmaking and the friends list, unlocks and progression, visual glitches and bugs and rendering and, and graphical rendering and things like that. Uh, map spawns, some improvements coming to portal and hazard zone, vehicle improvements, weapon improvements, HUD improvements, and just all kinds of stuff. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out. It should be coming in early December. All right, guys, that's been it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, if you found it entertaining or helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out as a small content creator. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Come over and say, hey, we're building a fun little community there. Everybody's really nice. And we can talk about all things Battlefield. Thanks again, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next video.